Welcome to Hatch. This is our new podcast with startups in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We are looking for new visionaries and disruptors in the tech space, in the fashion space, in the automotive space, in the biotech space. We want to know about startups. And today we're at the Venture Cafe, One Broadway. It's a place where over 300 people come on Thursday nights to network and groove and schmooze. And they've given us a quiet little corner to try and have a quiet podcast. Um, with a startup that we find interesting each week. Our first guest is Maya. Maya Heyman is with Common Angels. She's an angel investor. She's here in the building. Uh, we have over 700 startups, I'm told, inside the Cambridge Innovation Center. And so we thought she'd be the perfect person to start off with to talk about startups and what's happening in Cambridge. So welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being our first guest. Absolutely. I think what most startups want to know is when should they come to you? Do they only need a business plan, or do they need to have a revenue model and some revenue coming in already? Uh, I think they can come at any time, right? Mo most investors want to be accessible, want to be open. We certainly do office hours here at the Venture Cafe so that we can be accessible. And so um, the, what you're doing is you're building a relationship with an investor. And so, you know, is there a right time, a wrong time? I don't think so. It's begin a dialogue, get feedback, just like you will do with your business. You're going to iterate. Similarly, with an, an investor, start a dialogue, even if it's just to seek advice and get feedback, and you're not ready to pitch. That's, that's a brilliant time. I, I often say the best time to raise money is when you're not. Why is that? Because you can uh, may have the conversation be consultative and um, interactive, and not you're not asking uh, necessarily for the money right then and there. You can get feedback, and oftentimes investors have seen hundreds or thousands of companies, depending on how long they've been doing it, and they may have a thing or two that will help the entrepreneur with the very business that they're trying to build. So start the dialogue early. Now, you've been in this business for a while. Can you tell us a little bit about your trajectory as an investor and what Common Angels is doing today that's different? Uh, so, uh, two stories. So, my story is a, you know, circuitous, you know, what a, what a long, strange trip it's been, right? Right. Uh, um, which is probably less interesting than, than Common Angels. Uh, but uh, very quickly, I started, I spent my whole career either investing in or financing technology companies. Um, 10 years in Silicon Valley, moved back here 12 years ago. Um, and so I started out as a technology banker, um, investment banker, um, a venture capitalist uh, at, at Bank Boston Ventures, um, and then spent some time as a limited partner selecting venture firms and private equity firms. Um, and along the way, I started doing angel investing. Just on your own, with your own checkbook, cutting your own checks? Just, just on my own. Um, it, 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 what I was doing um, at the time, uh, I, I was managing Bank Boston Ventures portfolio within B of A, uh, but B of A was not making new investments anymore. So I had the, I, I didn't, um, I had the idea of, of starting on my own and taking all the learning that I had and applying it. Um, for my own investing benefit, and they they were okay with that, um, and so that's how I started to get into doing personal investing. How did that go for you? <laughs> oh well, I'm still doing it, and now I'm doing right. So it went. It, it I started my first personal investment was in 2006, and um, I'm, I'm any wins still, you want to share it. with us? Um, sure. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Cardstar uh, was bought by Constant Contact. Ironwood Pharmaceuticals went public. Inquira was bought by Oracle. Um, Doc Tracker was bought by Intralink. Okay, so, okay, yeah. okay. So, so you, yeah, you, so I've done, yeah, you, you've so. got it. So what's your right. spidey sense with Common Angels? What is it that you've figured out? Yeah, so, so let me weave that into. So that's how I got involved with Common Angels is I knew it's good to have a network. I knew um, I'm only one person, and to have my network amplified by uh, peers in the industry, so that's why I joined Common Angels. And over the years, um, you know, it's it's a it's a fabulous spot for um, entrepreneurs to come because not only is it capital, but it's connections. 
our investors are former entrepreneurs or current entrepreneurs who have started, built, and sold their own companies. So they've been in, this, in, the, in the shoes, they've sat in the seat of the entrepreneur once, twice, sometimes three times. They know what they're doing. And um, so it's, it's a very unique model of capital and experienced uh, entrepreneurs themselves. And I, the, the, the more I got involved with the group, the more I got in, involved with the group and eventually uh, joined the board and took, was chairman of the board and, and was um, really seeing an opportunity for us to shift our own model to be, to be more accessible to the entrepreneur. And um, I think about it as sort of productizing what the entrepreneur wants. Again, they want, the, you know, they want and need growth capital and those connections. And that's what we've done by shifting Common Angels to a fund. So we are a, a seed fund. Um, we, we just closed on almost 27 million, so 26 and a half million. In, in, thank you. In uh, capital. And, um, but yet our, that capital comes from those very angel investors that I just mentioned, who have the experience, who have the networks, who are still in the industry. So we're marrying these two very important components of, 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 of uh, how to back and help st startups in the community. One of the worries for startups when they deal with angels, if there's a big group, is that there's going to be one angel that's just not into the group, it's sort of like Shark Tank. They're going to be yep. voted off the yeah. island. Yep. Or that um, there's a slowdown because right. there are so many people that have to come together on this. How is Common Angels doing this differently? Yeah, I love that question. So that's exactly why we transformed to a fund. So there's one large check that comes from our fund. There may be a handful of individuals who invest alongside the fund, but, but um, the decision-making process is, is much more streamlined uh, because there are, there are two general partners who are managing the fund, but yet we get to tap into that network I just described, that, that they have the domain expertise. And you know, you know how you started, you know, we're looking at you know, uh, consumer you know, fashion, automotive. Well, software touches every single industry out there, and we focus on software investments. So as you were introducing, I was thinking, yep, we've seen, you know, we, we, you know, we, every, every vertical you can name, you can real touch. estate, real estate, right? There's a tremendous amount of innovation on, on how software is being used for occupancy rates, um, heating and cooling systems. Uh, you know, HVAC system. So, other than software, everything. do you have another expertise that you really have the strength in, and you have investors that are seriously interested in a certain vertical? Well, it, I'll answer it the same way. So, software touches everything. So, we have folks who come out of um, healthcare IT, folks who have come out of f fintech, financial services technology, um, workflow process. So, it 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 really uh, we just we just invested in a company that's doing. Um, methane gas optimization. It's, there's a hardware component, but it's low-side controls, and they're, uh, they, they are helping landfills extract more methane gas out of a, a landfill. And sadly, trash is a huge industry in the US, right? right. But, but converting that trash into energy and enabling the cogen power plants that are right next to the landfills extract more methane gas while um, not disrupting the anaerobic process, mm. uh, you know, that's a software, that's, that a so that's, that's, that's software. So T tell me, where are most of the investments? Are they Cambridge based? Is Cambridge the hub or is it all around the U.S. for you? It's, it's greater Boston area predominantly, but we will also invest, we, we, we define it now as sort of the Northeast. We have four investments in New York. We have two investments in Canada. And what, what, what the common theme is, is following an entrepreneur whom we know well, who we've either backed before or one of our own investors, um, maybe that person was their deputy. And they, you know, the, the quality of the entrepreneur is something that's known to us. Um, or a board member, one of our investors is going on the board, um, that, so a company in, in um, Ottawa, one of our own investors is on the board. He's an investor we know well. We backed him actually in a prior company. I mean, you believe it's all, in him and you follow. Okay, yeah, let's say I'm the new kid. I don't have any of these contacts. I don't know the person on your board. You haven't invested in me before. That infamous pitch. Yeah. What 
do they say to you and right. how much time do you really have? Yeah, how do you, how do you crack the how code? How do you crack that code with right. that pitch? Yeah, um, I actually think, so the pitch is, the pitch is, that, that's um, the ends, it's the means to the end. So it's, it's, it's you know, what's wonderful about the transparency today of LinkedIn, um, social networks, you can find people who know, so the best way in is to find people who know you, who know how good you are, who will vouch for you, pick up the phone, send the email and say, you must talk with so and so. So the, the warm introduction. That really um, helps for it, you to it, pay attention. For any investor, right? right? There, there is so much that if someone is coming in who's well recommended, that's, that's how um, it'll bu that person will bubble to the top. So they're in the room with you, they've got how many seconds, what are you looking for? Oh, this is this is this is always a hard one to answer. This is all the entrepreneurs thinking about. They're like, but what am I going to say? say yeah. How many seconds do I have? So um, I often give the advice that that, um, and I and, and many investors give this advice. It's people back people. So it's the per, it's the person, it's the team who will deliver, uh, who will execute. So why is it that that you, the entrepreneur, why are you the best person on the planet or in this country? to do what you're doing. Um, Software for methane gas. Right, right. And so the two co-founders, they, they are, I mean, they, they have such deep domain expertise that they, they were the ones. Um, and so, so I, I think entrepreneurs should start with um, what is it about them or their industry depth? What did they do prior to this company where they really understood the problem that they're trying to solve or the opportunity that's in front of them and and there's there's that's usually the the hook that they they were at a company and they kept saying we need to develop this product and the larger company wouldn't you know couldn't allocate the resources or put it on the roadmap so they, and they thought the opportunity was so compelling that they left and started their own company for instance Let's pay attention to the investors as well, because there are a lot of people out there. We have this aging community. They've had a wonderful ride. If you were a baby boomer, you've gone some, through some pretty good markets. You own a lot of real estate. You're looking to do investments. How do you get to be an investor with Common Angel? Um, there are lots of, so as an individual, right? What, what would this is a Gen Xer speaking to you, yeah, saying, right, yeah. these baby boomers, they've had a pretty right, good time. Yeah, yeah. But where's their money, and how right. do we get it out there for the entrepreneur? Right. Um, again, it's 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 those connections if, if you can find a way to get to an individual and it and, and and whether it's a fund or whether it's an individual that you're looking to um, get capital from what's the connection what so, so it's thinking about who's the the right fit for you so even individual angels um, some will be the right fit some won't why are they the right fit well they're the right fit because they came out of the same industry or the same vertical, or they sat in the customer's seat and they, that angel felt the customer's pain point and they see this solution and they say, oh, I would have bought this. So it's, it's, it's the, um, what's, the, what's the compelling reason that an, that an angel will invest with you? And it's usually because they, they the angel, have some strong connection, some understanding of, so what you, of what the entrepreneur is solving. Do you have people calling you saying, I want to write a check for a million dollars, five million dollars, and be one of your investors? That's, so in, in transforming, what we shifted from was um, an organization where um, folks sort of wrote individual checks, and we shifted to pooling the capital so we have a fund. And again, this, um, this is, this is really important for us. You know, we're, we invest in software, software's pretty competitive, and our thinking was um, what makes it easier for the entrepreneur to access us and get our capital? And it's, it's this fund model. So we're a little bit- But you're bit still going to pr private investors. You're not going to another fund to fund you. To, um, correct, it is, it is it's, that's what's unique about the model is that our, our, our funds come from individuals, but we've pooled the capital so that it were much easier to interface with for, for an entrepreneur. For an entrepreneur, it's faster. It's faster, it's quick, it's very clear. It's What's your turnaround? Uh, so it, it, 
it can vary from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. It's it's how and and what drives the the varying degree is um, how well how how formulated the business is. You know how how many answers the entrepreneur already has because they've uh, they've uh, been in market with a small beta test and uh, there's a lot of um, things that we can understand quickly or um, and, you know and then you know how quickly um, we can assess the competitive situation or, or Get maybe speed they've done on yeah it. right maybe they've done that thems themselves and can help us get up to speed. So you see a lot and so I know that many of the interviews we'll be doing will be with the entrepreneurs themselves so I'd like to take a chance to have you share with us if you would the hottest areas that you're watching right now. Uh, you know um, so th that's a that's so wide open I, I think what's com we'll date it okay we'll say today is November well, the 13th 2014 yeah. one of the hottest ones on this date. Um, this is this may not be what you're looking for, but um, we, having done this for 20 years, chasing the hottest things, I, you know, I they cycle. Um, so I, I tend I tend to answer that question with, well, who's who's solving really hard to solve problems in very defensible ways? So it's it's not you know I'm, I mean you know like social, mobile, local, right? I mean, it's it like, it, ju it just cycles. How about it's, climate change? You watching that one at all? Uh, not really, but, 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 that d but that doesn't mean that there's not compelling opportunity. We, it's, it's, um, Drug discovery. So life sciences is an area where we don't invest. Again, we, uh, we just don't have the domain expertise. We're software, so, Therapeutics, life sciences, drug discovery—that is, that's a fascinating, and, and and Boston is fantastic in that area. We just don't focus there because we're all software geeks. Do you want to send the biotech entrepreneurs listening right now to someone, to a friend, to another shop? Oh, they're fabulous. I mean, Boston has fabulous VCs in life sciences. How about um, angels? And there are angels. I'm not so familiar with. There's um, mass medical angels. But but um, I mean the the, the the VCs that do ther therapeutics. Uh, I mean there's Lightstone, there's Bessemer, there's um, Atlas. Uh, there I mean Boston has a it, it's a fabulous community. Boston for life, is no life sciences. And Boston is known for being a sci um, a city for finance, a city for funding. Yeah. Much like San Francisco and Palo Alto. Do you all know each other? Within Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that. So I can compare both coasts, and I, what's really fun for me personally is that uh, Boston is really, I said this to, uh, to, to um, Tim Rowe recently, it's like Boston is feeling like Palo Alto felt to me 12 years ago when I was there. I can walk out in Kendall Square and literally run into people and trans, you know, almost you're like, I know I owe you a voicemail or I'll get back to you on that email. So Boston is it's it's a, what's fabulous in Kendall Square and Cambridge and even uh, Boston and Innovation District there, it's um, the concentration is a really good thing because you because um, get things done you get things done um, I, I it's much more easier for ideas to flow for connections to be made um, for relationships to be built. So I do think people really do. There's a, there's a fabulous collaborative community here in uh, tech, software, mobile, in life sciences, and it's just it's really I'm really excited for Boston to um, you know we like there's just so much energy. You can feel the energy. You can yeah, definitely and, in the and last the community years, you can really and the ecosystem. The it's like come on, we yeah, can do it's this. Happening. Uh, okay, so we're going to have a little fun at the end of every interview yep. because we like to do that on the editorial.com when we do our long format interviews with established visionaries and change agents, which you kind of cross both. You can cross pollinate. But we want to have a little fun with the startups. And so we're going to ask you a little bit of a pop question. Uh -oh. You have a multiple choice. And um, we would like to know if you're ready. Absolutely. To which city did Mark Zuckerberg donate $100 million for public schools? A, New York. B, San Francisco, C, Newark. 
A, New York. Yeah, I, I B, think San I read Francisco. The, well, I don't think C, it was San Francisco. Newark. Um, you can call a friend in the audience. Call a friend. Audience. <laughs> call a friend. <laughs> it, it was Newark. It was Newark. It, Newark. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. In September 2010, thank, thank Mark Zuckerberg gave $100 million to the public school board of Newark, a wonderful social leadership move. We're going to try and focus on those on some of our interviews. Fabulous. His wife and he just gave another $120 million to San Francisco Public Schools. And that is what Hatch is going to be all about. We're going to try and talk to the people who are making things happen here in Cambridge, startups, social leadership, um, investors who are needed to make these entrepreneurs uh, have a chance to fly. My name is Heidi Legg. I am the founder of TheEditorial.com. This is Hatch at Venture Cafe at the Cambridge Innovation Center. Thanks for listening. Fabulous. Thank you. I love the Thank mission. you so much. Yeah. You're good. That was great. All right, you guys.